even if they're brand new, they should have that sample ready before they go out and play. So the bar and club owners don't have an excuse to say, well, I didn't know they were going to be terrible. <laughs> you can check that first. Now, we're going to assume they are very good. So you hire them for the agreed price. Let's hypothetically say $500. You get up in the morning, you have coffee, you have breakfast, you head out to the start your day. The minute you open the door to your business, walk over to the register, lift it up and put the money underneath the drawer. You need to put that money aside and have it ready, whether it's in your office or wherever it is in your business that you think it's safe. Have it ready and aside that day. You're having a service that you hired. They're coming in. They're going to do something. They're going to be working for you. You need to pay them. That's the bottom line. If you don't pay for it, you're the one that's responsible. And the reality is, is that it is a verbal contract. You can be sued for it. And believe me, you don't want to. So, everybody should play nice together. I guarantee that if the club owners do their half and their responsible end, which is to make sure they have the money, make sure they're doing good business, and to make sure they check out the bands and see if they're even worth hiring, while the bands do their part, which is to make sure they practice their butts off, work their butts off, and make sure that they sound good and put on a good show for you guys, I guarantee you in the end, you're going to weed out the bad bands, you're going to make the competition stiffer, and you're still going to have quality in there. That's what it's about. It's about quality, not quantity. It's about that and that only. That's the bottom line. No petty stuff. So who's at fault in short? The guy bouncing the check. Don't do it. You're embarrassing yourself and you're insulting the musicians. End of story. Thank you. And if anybody else has any questions, by all means, write me at nico at nicorocks.com. So that's it. Thanks for watching another edition of the Craigslist Review. Okay, this week I've got a special guest on the show. He is from New Jersey. He's a singer. He's a songwriter. He's a guitar player. Please give a warm welcome to Dom Dom. Welcome to the show. How are you, man? I'm doing good. How are you, Nico? Good, good, good. So welcome to the show, and we're going to start off simply. Why don't you just tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Who is Dom? Oh, well, musically, I'm a, a, a hobbyist who decided to try his hand at, at performing publicly. And I've been doing that for a few years now. It's been a little more than seven years that I decided to venture out into public and, and you know, let total strangers hear some of my music. Also, and simultaneously, some of me trying to perform my own music, which is, you know, twice the adventure. Um, and it, it kind of went from there. I, I uh, got over my stage fright, learned to enjoy it, and started to get some gigs and then uh, you know, really looked into the different directions you can go as a, a performer. And I've now gotten into uh, some really nice working gigs. You know, I play for a few hours at a pretty good restaurant or bar, you know, the kind of place I would enjoy going to. I think I'm very fortunate to, to be able to play my music uh, for total strangers, you know. <laughs> Again, that whole concept of, you know, you can, you can play by yourself in your room, you can uh, play for some friends and family at a party or something, but uh, to, be, to be able to go out and play for people who don't know you and, and you know, don't have any reason to like you has been uh, a really neat experience for me. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I decided one day to, to take it behind, beyond a, a hobby. It's like people show up and they have really no pre preconceived idea. They're just there. They're at the venue. They may be there randomly. Maybe they heard about you, but they're there. And you have sort of the fortune of, of having them really w willing to listen to that. And it's great. Yeah. Now, have you always lived in New Jersey? Well, I am uh, originally from the New York City area. I lived in suburban New York State, um, you know, within an hour of New York City for, I guess, the, the first 18 years all through through grade school and high school. And, um, you know, still maintained my address there when I was away at college for a few years. And uh, since I've been out of college, I've lived in Scranton, Pennsylvania. I've lived in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, and now I live in Clayton, New Jersey, which is southern New Jersey, closer to Atlantic City and, you know, the Delaware Memorial Bridge than to anything in New York City, actually south of Philadelphia, even on the Pennsylvania side. So I'm in southern New Jersey now, and I've been here for a little bit more than 10 years. So you, you basically started writing music in doing music in Jersey? Is that right? 
kind of inspired that that whole start being a, a hobbyist songwriter and a hobbyist guitarist and enjoying it as you know a mental exercise and as a music fan kind of getting a kick out of the fact that I could you know write stuff and, and play stuff sometimes that you know I, I kind of liked as, uh, as more than just the person who made it but you know I as a fan I, I might like some of this stuff I, I guess I, it was hearing a, an advertisement on a radio station. Um, at, at the time, there was this bar out in Philadelphia called the Grape Street Pub, and they had um, a tie-in with a, a radio station in Philadelphia uh, where that radio station would uh, sort of sponsor uh, one of the nights of the week when they had bands in there playing all night. You know, there'd be five or six bands on the bill. And so I heard the announcement for that place on that radio station. And in addition to that, they just, you know, threw in little mentions of everything else that was going on at that club. And one of the things they said was Monday night is open mic night. And I had heard of open mics, but I had never gone to one. Not even to listen? And so, not even to listen, no. I, 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 so you really uh, went in so there I, I, without any expectations? <laughs> well, I, I went out there one week just to... First of all, see if I could find the place. And I went in and just hung out that first week that I went up there. I didn't bring my guitar, didn't bring any instruments, didn't do anything. Just, you know, asked if this open mic night. They said, sure. And, and yeah, uh, for a preview. Up? I said, no, I, I don't want to play. I just wanted to listen. Yeah. And so I just hung out and, and got an idea of, okay, what happens here? And then the, it was a, a week after that that I went back with the instruments and everything and decided, yeah, I want to give this a try. I think mine was almost the same thing. I, I did really start going out publicly to open mics before anything else, to really get out in a public place in front of strangers and, and you know, really other other players when you're at open mics. That was my biggest thing, was to get up there and not be terrified. And I was terrified. I, you know, you showed up at these, these jams sometimes. I would go to blues houses. And, you know, blues is like, if you know three chords, you're good and golden. <laughs> but these guys would be, you know, well around 50 years old, and I'd only been playing for two years. And they'd look at me and say, hey, man, take a solo or something. And I was like, are you kidding me? Hell no. You know, you're terrified. No, thank you. Yeah, absolutely terrified. And, and yet, at the same time, it's good for you because in that sense, you kind of get a feel of what it is you're stepping into. And I think, at least for me, the bonus was that they were cool guys. You know, if you did poorly, they kind of still came up to you and they gave you some tips and a pat on the back. They weren't like, geez, this guy sucks, get him out of here. So you just... Well, that's one of the things. If you're, if you're going out to an open mic like that, it's, it's a casual environment, really. It's kind of informal. I mean, no, nobody expects you. And, and I, I found this out later. I, I thought you had to be really awesome even to go to an open mic. Because, you know, most open mics, if they're run properly, and I've had the opportunity to run some open mics and build some music programs over the years at, at a couple of businesses, you know, you, you don't expect people to be professionals. You don't expect them to be really good. It, it's definitely casual. It's definitely amateur hour. You know, you, you're not doing you know, complicated sound checks before you get up there. It's it's the kind of thing you can be there for whatever reason you want and just, you know, take your turn on the stage. And and for me, that, that was a good thing to find out because, you know, then, then I, I guess I could relax a little more. That, that was one of the things that helped the stage fright go away was realizing, that, oh, it, it's, it's okay if you're not, you know, MTV quality. Yeah, right. you can just kind of come out and, and hang up and try your hand at it. And and everybody's cool with it, and it's a good time. And and it's kind of nice, because sometimes you start to, after a couple of visits, you see some of those regulars that you saw before, and, you know, you kind of feel like you belong there. It's it's a neat feeling. 